Welcome back to the Unleashing Potentials podcast. So today's guest is Chantel. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. My kids are at school and I'm on vacation for a few hours. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Glad to be here. Can you tell our listeners where, where you're tuning in from? I am tuning in from Indianapolis, Indiana which oh, is known nice. as nap town oh <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys get winter there as well or what is it like yes we get fall spring summer winter but right now to be honest this weather here has been bipolar because last yeah. week it was 80 90 now today we like 40 50 it's cold we in coats so it's supposed to be fall yeah. but we're at least it seemed like winter <laughs> <laughs> wow wow yeah the weather changes so much and so quick too yes yeah. yeah so can you tell our listeners who you are and what you do okay like I said before I'm the founder of your work fighting for I'm Chantel Austin I deal with all cancer patients from young to old um I was a cancer patient also I had ovarian cancer hers two positive and also I had ovarian cancer so um I was diagnosed with cancer back in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I had a long journey ahead of me. So I came with a foundation called You Are Worth Fighting for All Cancer Matters because everyone was coming to me saying about breast cancer. No one was coming to me about ovarian cancer. But as I was sitting there doing chemo for 13 months, I seen a lot of people, ma'am, I mean, a lot of people that had um, brain cancer, liver cancer, um, one lady had or cancer, skin cancer. I never knew that it was these many counselors out there. Mm -hmm. Never knew until I came or counted on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's um, common for us sometimes to not under, understand until it happens to us. Yes. I can attest to that when it comes to mental health issues and chronic pain. I'm like, okay. And then boom, it happened to me. It hit me like, like it's so heavy um but what was your process of overcoming and fighting the cancer the cancers that you had um my process was to me like you said it's a mental thing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I had a rough time I mean when I say a rough time a rough time because you have to realize that my husband was in Afghanistan mm -hmm. when I caught cancer so I was battling it by myself I drove myself to chemo I came home so it was like a hard situation because I was trying to balance two lives. I was trying to support my husband while he's overseas and trying to live. Mm -hmm. So it was straining. Um, I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I won't wish that on no one. So it was very hard for me to balance my life back and forth, trying to help him out, me out, help him out, me out. And you're doing all this alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hard for sure. Um, let's talk about possibly the stigma sometimes society have when it comes to cancer patients. Um, my, my adoptive mom passed from cancer and I can speak on how heavy it weighs on uh, communities, families, and friends. But at times there are those, when people are diagnosed, they assume that that's the end of life when really that's not accurate. It's a fight that they have to fight at times alone, at times as a community and together. What are your thoughts on that? Um, it's all about who's in your corner, I um, feel. Um, when I got diagnosed, um, I thought it was a joke. You know, the doctor said, you have HERS2 positive breast cancer. I was like, I don't have no cancer. That's what I told him. You know, I said, whatever. I'm getting a second opinion. So what I did was I went to another doctor. Didn't tell him nothing about what my first doctor said. Mm -hmm. Went to another doctor. And they examined me, everything. He said, you have cancer. I said, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Went to third doctor. So the third, you know, third is the charm. I said, I'm going to three doctors. So you know, my husband said, you're wasting medical bills. You just keep going to doctors and doctors. They give you the same result. But I was in my mind, I didn't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to accept it. So when I went to my, the third doctor, I said, okay, didn't tell him anything. Examine me, everything. He said, you have a lump. Um, he said, the way it's moving, Phil, you know, you might have cancer. We, but we want to do a biopsy. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I didn't go back to him. I went back to my original doctor, Dr. Nate. And that's when he said, okay, what do you want to do? But to me, um, I felt that the community 
this is how I feel when it comes to counsel with the community. Some communities, I feel that does not really support it the way they should support it. They will support go buying shoes, clubs, but when you give a function for a counselor um, event, a lot of people don't support it like they do with um, say a sneaker ball or you know a prom or something like that. Because I give counselor balls every year and my numbers should turn out as big as it should, but it don't turn out as big as it should. Mm -hmm. But everybody else, you know, you look back, you say, okay, I'm still looking at the fact that my time coming, mm -hmm. you know, but like you say, they don't, the community don't support cancer the way they should support cancer. That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have cancer, never had it, but based on what I saw my mom went through, that's the conclusion I, I got. And it was accurate. Um, I don't know if there's enough resources when it comes to counseling, mental health, and extended resources just for cancer patients. I don't know. I've always heard about chemo and other stuff. And yeah, I would say there's cancer phobia in society, you know, as if someone's at the end of their life when really not all cancers are the same. Some people do come back very strong. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that cancer is a mind thing. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. You know, if you feel that you want to pass, you want to pass. You can't let it fight you. You have to defeat it. Because they gave me up. They told me I was going to die, get her husband home from Afghanistan. Her heart's going to stop. I was in ICU and everything. But it was a mind game. But I was looking at the fact that God was rebirthing me. I was being reborn. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very religious. So I felt that God had to sit me down mm -hmm. for a minute to get my attention. Mm -hmm. Because what he wanted me to do, I wasn't doing it. I wasn't obeying him. So now I'm finna put sit you down and let you see this is what you're supposed to be doing. I have speaking to people about this illness that's out. Because I had a lot of people that I knew that had cancer. You know, like you say, oh, you got cancer. I feel so sorry for you. Oh, okay. And that's it. That's it. And yeah. that's it. That's all I say. That's it. You know, you keep going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until I got it. You know, and it's like, wow, these people really feel like this. With chemo, chemo will break you down. I was down for 13 months. I was on a cane. I was weighing 60 pounds. But you know, you seen your mother, you know. So it's like some things you don't want, we don't want to hear. I know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through because you're not feeling the chemo. Yeah, yeah. Radiation, eight weeks. Oh, you burnt all on this side, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm burnt. It hurt. It's in pain. I can't go in the sun. As of right now, I still have to wear fully clothes in the summer because the sun will burn this side of me. So my skin be like hot, you know, and I get tight. And I be like, I can't put a tank top on if the sun is shining real bad, I say. Or if I do, I throw a shawl on or a towel or something. Yeah. So I tell people all the time, don't ever say that you know what you're going through to a cancer patient because we don't want to hear that because mm -hmm. you don't know what we're going through. You mm -hmm. can imagine what we're going through, but yeah. you don't feel the chemo, the poison going in your body. You don't see your hair coming out. You don't feel the depression, the suicidal, the mental illness, the, mm -hmm. the crying every night, hollering, screaming, throwing things. I did all of that. Wow. Wow. I agree. And that's something... That's a phrase that I refrain from expressing to anybody. And I always say, I can only imagine what it's like. Mm -hmm. How can I help? What yep, can I do? One. How are you feeling today? Versus saying, I know what you're going through. Yes. Like I said, I, I don't know. And um, I don't want to know in a good way. But it's learning to sit down and to be compassionate and to show empathy and understanding to cancer patients. Now, when it comes to cancer patients, based on your experience in the hospital with the healthcare team or doctors, what was your experience like? Um. Well, my experience was, it was good because I took on, I had good medical insurance, mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. Now I did a counter a couple of people who was like on Medicaid, low income people couldn't, they medicate, but couldn't get chemo no more. Last treatment, they'll say, "Well, your insurance can come through. This is your last treatment." I just feel so bad, you know. And this is me personally. I said that I feel that they treat people low income, lower, high incomes better than lower income. You got good insurance, they're gonna go all out. This is my opinion. I've seen it. I watched it. If you have Medicaid or some little cheap insurance, they're gonna only treat you enough just to get you out of there. I call it put a band aid on you. Now, if you have good insurance, they go all above. I had military insurance. So, you know, they was, oh my gosh, she had military insurance. So, you know, they was going to milk that because I didn't have a copay. I didn't have none of that. 
So my bill was from my 13 months of chemo, I had 11 surgeries, 13 months of chemo, eight weeks of radiation, and 12 weeks of therapy. My bill was over $300,000. I didn't pay one cent, not a copay or nothing. You have to think about it. with the medication, I had three bags. When they put the three bags up there, it's like $1,500 for the IV, just to order you the IV to go on your arm. Then you got $2,000 bag, one bag, $2,000, one bag, $1,100, one bag, $900. So this is every other week for 13 months. So it's like, then you got radiation. So, but then you got other patients I was seeing that's in the room next to me, the curtain there, but you could hear them, you know, they crying because they say your insurance, you know, Medicaid, they're not covering this much. You know, they only could cover this much. You got to pay for this. They crying. And I'm like, sad because I say, wow, I wish I could help them. That's why I got the foundation going to try to bring funds in a foundation to help cancer patients. Mm -hmm. you know, that who can't get the proper care or treatment that they need, especially the low income minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah. The, the health insurance and healthcare is different in the States than Canada. Um, but it applies in, in very similar ways. You know how the low income, the way people look at them, society looks mm -hmm. at them like they're a lost cause and they don't really have the help and they actually do need the help. Yeah. As you were speaking about your foundation, I tied in faith. Can you, are you, are you a spiritual person? What kept you going on a, on a soul level? What kept me going was that my grandmother, mm -hmm. I could always hear her say, um, faith, mm -hmm. keep walking. Mm -hmm. you have faith you got to have keep the faith you know and she always just tell us god gonna come when he wants to come he's not gonna come when you want him to come mm -hmm. he's gonna come when it's unexpected mm -hmm. and she always said me not to give up she's always just tell us don't give up mm -hmm. i wanted to give up many a times i mean mm -hmm. i couldn't do it you know i'm sorry <laughs> i get emotional when i talk about oh, it it's okay you know okay. i couldn't do it i want to, i tell people my support groups i couldn't do it i was like 60 mm -hmm. pounds People walked off from me, my friends, you know, um, my husband in Afghanistan. And I kept saying, I just wanted God just take me. I want to die. I can't take the chemo was so strong. You know, I kept going in and out the hospital, you know, barely walking, driving myself to chemo, you know, on side of the road, you know, got to take a nap, police knocking on my window. Are you drunk? No, ma'am. I, sir, I just took chemo. I, I just got to sit here. Can, we, can I sit here? You know, so it's like, I tell people the faith I had to, I got into a black cloud over my head. I had changed my whole house to black, never open my drapes no more. And people, my neighbors knew I always open my drapes. You know, mm -hmm. they kept saying, why are you not open your drapes? You know, I said, I just don't feel good, you know? And then she just took chemo. You know, mm -hmm. I was gone one day for 14 days mm -hmm. and my son, he was 18 then and my daughter and they knocked on the door. The neighbor asked, was I dead? Cause they said they didn't see me at all. They said, your mom passed because we haven't seen her. They said, no, she's in ICU. She's in hospital. She's battling for her life. You know, and I tell people when I was out them 14 days, mm -hmm. a brother just passed and he told me, keep the faith. I seen him. I was playing with him. He said that I said, I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was tired. I couldn't do it no more. Wow. But my brother told me, no, you're not. And I see people. People don't believe me. I tell them all the time. I was standing right there when y'all was crying. You know, I kept telling them, what you crying for? I'm here. I'm standing right here. And I see everybody crying around the hospital bed. I'm here. I'm standing here. But nobody could hear me. I see everybody crying. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I keep hearing my grandma say, y'all disturbing my peace. Stop <laughs> crying. You yeah. disturbing my peace. Stop crying. Yeah. She ain't going nowhere. But when my brother, when I was playing with him in my dream, pushed my body back into my soul and I jumped up, they said, and they got the doctors. And they said I was going like into a seizure. Wow. And two hours later, my ass opened. I had a thing in my throat. My ass opened. Wow. And I just That's started. Fascinating. Wow. Thank no. you for sharing. Um, I've heard many different stories about NDE or being outside of the body. And at the time you said you saw people around you. It sounded like you did come out. Your soul came out of your body for a bit because you could see and then you got pushed back because it wasn't your time to go right wow 
And it was your, who pushed you and your grandmother or your brother? My brother. Wow. My brother, he died. He got killed when he got, and I wanted to go with him. And I kept saying, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. He said, no, you're not. No. Yeah. 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 You they know. can do that from where they are. Yeah. I believe you. Wow. What, what a strong woman you are. You've overcome so much. And um, I'm just grateful to just be talking to you because the work that you're doing, it's needed. Mm -hmm. And you're bringing light and hope into so many people's lives that need it, especially cancer patients. It is a very, again, I don't know what it feels like, but from what I saw, it, it looked like it's a very, very lonely, isolating, dark place to be. And any rays of hope and light that can shine there is truly admirable. So thank you for what you do. You're welcome. I'm mm -hmm. trying. Yeah. So what was your life like before you got sick? Oh, man, I think I had the perfect life. I mean, I was traveling, me and my husband, we was just living it up. I mean, going everywhere, traveling to different states, um, partying, mm -hmm. enjoying life. Mm -hmm. You know, we we always call us the awesome, awesome Austins, you know, you know, we're black, awesome Austin in your town. You know, we come into your town March 21st, so we come into your town. We just was gone. Yeah. Babe, when I tell you God set me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh -uh, you doing too much. You ain't you forgetting about me. Don't put no man before me. And you begin to put this world and your husband before me. So now I gotta sit you down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um who is your source of inspiration? What are some people that you look up to? I looked up to my dad. Mm. Um, my grandma, I know she was my inspiration because she fought until her last. She didn't have cancer, but she died. On, she was 97. She died of natural cause, the heart attack in 2022, 21. And mm. um, she just was, you go over there. I mean, I just tell her all the time, you're my inspiration. You know, my dad always gave me motivation. No matter, you know how your dad is, no matter what you do, baby. They're going to always <laughs> give you, you could do something wrong. You always think that you're doing something <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so um, that's about it. My friend, um, Maisha, mm -hmm. her husband died from lung cancer and yeah. she was, she was strong. You know, I was there for, her. she was mm -hmm. strong, but to me, what give me the motivation is just to keep going, mm -hmm. to never give up myself, mm -hmm. keep going, don't give up, keep fighting. Yeah. Until you reach this cancer research, till you reach so many people, I want to go global. I want my foundation to go global so I can help everybody, not just certain people. Mm -hmm. I want to help everybody in the world. You know, mm -hmm. lots of people mm -hmm. say, Shante, you can't do all that, man. Come on. I say, yes, I can. That's yes, you can, That's man. Right. Yes, That's you what can. I want to do. You're doing it. Yep. Yeah, you're doing it. And you got to manifest it. I manifest it every morning I get up. I got a board, vision board. Mm -hmm. sit right there in front of my bed and I look at it I just point to it I say we gonna be there we gonna be there I got the world there and I said we go we going <laughs> yes you can you're in you're in Canada with me we're talking but we're connected so yeah yes yes I can definitely see that happening and your grandma is so proud of you was she a little mm -hmm. feisty firecracker yes my grandma <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah yes. I just saw her just cheering you on and Yes, I said that yesterday. I said, no, my grandma looking down at me and my dad, like, yes, you got this. You oh, yeah. This. oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm not a trained medium, but I've, I connect sometimes with the other side. So I was just kind of listening and, and seeing what's happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. They're so proud of you. And your brother is so happy he pushed you back. <laughs> they're so proud of you like profoundly proud and they're just happy that you continue to carry on their legacy like they live through you completely they do live through you yeah thank you I yeah was wondering that. and she said don't you dare quit yeah okay. no nope. no nope. don't do it <laughs> yeah yeah so do did you have some really really good childhood memories with them 
um, yeah, my grandma. We t- we stayed in church. I stayed with my grandma. Me and my oh, oldest three sisters. Yeah. So we lived <laughs> with my grandma. Um, she raised us and we was in church every Sunday. One thing she told us, when times get hard, she said, Don't go to man, don't go to no one, get on them knees and you cry out to God. Mm-hmm. She always told us that, you know, from we little, I mean little kids, you know, we stayed in church choir her so vocational Bible school, Sunday school, and we didn't miss, miss a day like we sick, she'll be like, you didn't go to church yesterday, so you're not going outside this week. Oh. You know, it was one of them <laughs> <four> moms. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, wow. yeah, she was strict, honey. She also tell us God is the one who got, woke you up. God is the one who put him first, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I miss her so much because she yeah. was no more than grandmas. You know, we don't got them old school grandmas no more. Oh, no, no, no. It's very rare to find a few. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I I remember mine. They, they put me in my place. Right okay. in my lane. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't have that anymore. It's hard to find. Yeah. You get, you get them teenagers disrespecting their parents and elderly. Yeah. And uh, what has this world come to? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. See, yeah. that all the time too disrespectful a different breed generation they say they told me yesterday in one of my meetings mm-hmm. I had a young lady was like well Miss Austin this is different this is not like 1970 when you was born and all of that this is a different breed I said y'all too disrespectful that's yeah. the problem yeah. you need to bring that back the police stop that because you whoop them they want to ah. take the mama to jail you do this <laughs> but they could whoop them yeah. you know yeah. they call 911 CPS they stopped all the stuff that was going on Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is one of the most important lesson that you've learned over over time, uh, when it comes to hardship and faith? That you only have yourself. Mm. That's the most important lesson I've learned. When don't depend on no one to do anything. People walk off from you, mm. and wouldn't look back because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it happened to me. Your dream, you follow your dream. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. your dream. It's your vision. God got it for you. Everybody not going with you. Mm-hmm. So that's why I always say, remember that you are worth fighting for yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's not selfish to fight for yourself. Mm-hmm. That That's how I was made to, you know, some people made me feel that yeah. I was selfish for saying I love myself or speaking up my truth. Hey, when I started the podcast, people walked away right? They still walk away. And did it hurt? Hell yes. Mm -hmm. But am I still here? Yes, I am. You know, I'm just carrying on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking back in your life, is there anything that you change or do differently? Look back in my life. I feel that, um, differently, I would have had more self-care about myself. Mm-hmm. love myself more than I do now mm-hmm. I would um continue my dreams mm-hmm. never quit because a lot of stuff I felt that um I could have done I quit mm-hmm. you know how you quit doing things different things with your life um we as young folks we wasn't taught as about credit you know our parents didn't teach us that because the only thing we knew about was coming up working we seen our parents work provide mm-hmm. We didn't get the luxury to know about credit. You need your credit to mm-hmm. build. You mm-hmm. know, you need this, you need that. We didn't get the luxury about how to treat a man supposed to treat you. Do you get what I'm saying? As back in the seventies, our mother didn't guide us on that. She guided us as a go to school, get a diploma, go off to college, make some out yourself. Mm-hmm. We didn't get to find this kind of man, you know, cause your mother and daddy working every day. Don't let a man disrespect you. Don't mm-hmm. let a man do this. Don't let a woman do this to you. Mm-hmm. Reach for the stars. You are perfect. You are powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, keep going. Don't never give up. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. if I can do things better, different, I will be able to go back. Mm-hmm. And my whole life, I think, would have turned around. But I wouldn't do the cancer thing different because I'm glad I went through that because it humbled me. Wow. That's powerful stuff you just said. Wow. And I said the same thing about mental health issues I have. And all the stuff I've been through, I think our struggles can truly humble us and they Mm -hmm. can turn out, we can turn our pain into purpose and passion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about your foundation. 
What what is it called? What do you do and how do you do it? Okay, so my foundation called You Are Worth Fighting For. See on back of the wall, my logo, All Cancer nice. Matters. Wow, I love it. It's all the colors of um cancer ribbons. So mm -hmm. what we do is we go out and help all cancer patients from young to old who can't help themselves, who have low, like I said before, lack of medical insurance, prescription costs, mm -hmm. um, food to get around. So what we do is we go take the load off of them. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I go out, I take them, if they call and say, hey, I need to ride the chemo. I take them to chemo. I pick them up or sit with them. Mm -hmm. They need a copay paid. We as the foundation, we get the money out. If we have the funding, we go pay the copay. If we don't have the funding in our foundation, we go out our pockets, wow. you know, our own paychecks. We go pay the light bill. We pay the rent. We help with funeral expenses. We um sit there and hold their hand. We go to the funeral home with them. We go to chemo with them. We have support groups. We have fundraisers. Um, we have mm -hmm. sipping paints. We call each other, motivate each other. You know, mm -hmm. we try to, we do everything. We try to help them with resumes. We let them know life ain't over yet. Mm -hmm. You know, they still, if they can't work, you can work. I tell them all the time, you can work because I worked hard time when I took chemo. Mm -hmm. I only work one day a week, but you can work. Don't never let cancer overfeed you. You're going to defeat it. Yeah. I tell people all the time, I defeat death. That's my number one topic all the time inside. We have our support groups. You know, I let them know mm -hmm. I defeated death three times. So you guys going to defeat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we do so much, you know. I love it because we go out and help. We feed the homeless. You know, we um, take them to chemo. We sit there with them. We give them blankets. Mm -hmm. um, we talk to them. We bring them books. Mm -hmm. We uh, cry together. We laugh together. We pray together. You know, so we do so much. So I'm trying to get it to be global. And everything I'm doing is coming out of my pocket. I don't have any grants. Mm -hmm. I got scammed for a grant. Someone did a grant for me. I paid $2,000. They scammed me, took my money, didn't do anything. So I do everything out of pocket, me and my vice president and my husband. So if someone call me right now, my light bill needs to be due. How much is your light bill? So they're forced. I do an intake sheet. Yeah. They'll force over to me. I intake them, you know, what hospital they're doing chemo in. And because no people can't scam you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do an intake. You know, I let them know I'm a 501c3 nonprofit organization, you know, mm -hmm. so... We do intake. We sit there. We um, go with them to chemo. I talk to the nurse and stuff. And if they need food or anything, I even get food shipped to them from Amazon to their house. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm trying to I'm trying to do, you know, you know, someone who need a cancer patient or who need help or, you know, could help me also, you know, donate towards the foundation. We have sponsorships on my website. We have all of that. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm trying. Oh, you're doing it. Um, I love the work that you're doing. I, I love it so much. And I, I can feel your passion and desire and love to awaken people, you know, to not let their circumstances defeat them, mm -hmm. that they're better. They can become better and do better. And I love that you help them because it helps with mindset. Because it's easy when we're in a dark place to think that no one is coming. At times, there are nobody there, but your organization is there and you're there. I think the work that you're doing, it's it's heaven sent, if I may put it that way. Mm. Because you've been through it, you can sit with people in their pain. And that's very, very powerful. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know how they feel. I've been on that side. Yeah, yeah. What is one thing about yourself that you'll never change, no matter what? Um, hmm. One thing I will never change about myself. The way I am, giving, loving, no matter if people walk off from me. You know, I'm always be that humble person. I'm always, you could cuss me out and I'm still, if you need me, I'm still going to be there. So I'm going to be that loving, giving person that's never, I'm going to be the person that you're going to need one day that I'm not going to turn your back on. I tell people that all the time. Yeah. And the world needs more people like that because some people, when they turn, all you see is their footstep and their back and they're gone. Oh. And it takes uh, some kind of bravery and and authenticity and love to turn back after someone hurts you and mm -hmm. i think sometimes people hurt each other because they're hurting and right. for you to turn back even though someone may hurt you it speaks volume of who you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know i'm human now sometimes a couple of people i have told i said where were you when i did my 13 months of chemo 
you know, we make a joke out of it, you know, and we uh, laugh. I said, <laughs> I said, but hey, I'm not going to talk about that because maybe this is a test from God mm-hmm. is bringing you to me. So I'm going to help you because now you is on the other side. You know, she don't have cancer, but she has um some kind of nerve damage she can't really walk or nothing and she needed me to take her to the doctor and I still took her but you the same person that dogged me out that told me that Mm -hmm. my husband wasn't going to want me because I dropped down to 60 pounds I'm sickly I'm bald-headed don't Mm -hmm. no man want a sick wife this is the same person called me now look at her God switched the table around now you need me but I don't throw it in her face you know I mm-hmm. said, that, come on, I'll take you to chemo. And you have to realize that I'm taking you to chemo, but I don't, we don't charge nobody no gas money because mm-hmm. we don't have any funding. We're doing everything. My board, we're doing it out of our pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, we're looking for funding. We're trying to ask people, hey, donate, whatever, because all the proceeds that we have, that we have goes to a cancer patient. I don't keep none of it. Yeah. I probably keep $100 in my business account. You know, but everything I get, I give it to a cancer patient. If I have four cancer patients in me, I'm going to split that up to four people. Mm-hmm. You know, like most businesses keep a percentage. Mm-hmm. I had someone call me the other day and she said that um, she called, so they gave her Susan Coleman number and Susan Coleman told her she mm-hmm. had oral cancer. She said Susan Coleman told her that mm-hmm. they only deal with breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. only breast cancer. And she said that I found your number through Yelp. Wow. And it said all cancer matters. Wow. So, so that's why I'm calling you. You know, we have to, we took the chemo. We brought her some food at Kroger's. We t- went to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. It was like eight o'clock at night. She didn't have no food. She got a little bitty baby. The baby's like five years old. We wow. brought her food and everything. And I gave her my card. I said, hey, we're here for you. Wow. You know, she said that I was just so crying because they told me they only deal with breast cancer and I have oral cancer. I said, we got you. Yeah, I said, you I, ain't alone. I've, I've, wow. I've, I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. A cancer patient being turned away because they don't have a specific type of cancer. Yeah. Isn't cancer cancer? No, not. But some companies, they say is breast is breast. They deal only with breast. They have funding for breast cancer. But I'm like you. I said the same thing. Cancer is cancer. I don't understand. You have some part of your body that's cancer. You should be able to help out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why I say I'm going global. Baby. God got me. I said, I'm going to get some grants <laughs> because he know if he give me some grants, there'll be so many people who going to be able to pay their Gonna have mm-hmm. they years worth of chemo. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna pay it up front. Gonna have this for them. They gonna be able to. They gonna they gonna have the treatment they need. Yeah, they gonna have the treatment I need. So I pray every day. I said, God, you got to bless me with some grass. I said it's coming. I know it's coming. I'm manifesting it. I said because there's so many people out here. I see that need really, 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 really need the help. They yeah. don't have insurance. They don't have this. They barely eating. They don't have money. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I agree. Why do you think it's important to continue advocating for cancer patients? Because I say they have no one else for them. No one else will speak up. So I'm their voice. I tell them all the time, I'm y'all voice. If you have a problem, contact me because I'm an advocate for the cancer patient. Wow. So I'm your voice for you. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, like you say, get scared to talk, say something. Mm-hmm. No, I'm your voice because I'm advocate for cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Where can my listeners find you? Do you have a website, courses? Yes, we have You're Worth Fighting For, the number four, dot org. Mm-hmm. And you want to email me? I have a couple of emails, info at allcancermatters.org. Mm-hmm. I have You're Worth Fighting For, the number four, at gmail.com. We located at 6250 La Poche Trail, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46268. My business line is 765-807-9157. Wow. I love that you're everywhere. Yes. <laughs> On all <laughs> platforms. It's needed. It's needed, right? Like yes. you said, mm-hmm. that lady found you on Yelp, right? It's needed to be connected everywhere. You never yep. know. You never yep. know. And I look there and find you. Yeah, look there. I'm on Facebook too. You're over fighting for. Mm-hmm. And then um, you're over fighting for a support group, cancer support group on Facebook, they'll see me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And let's say someone's watching this, they want to donate or partner with you. How do they do that? Um, You can go to my website at um, you're worth fighting for the number four dot org. You can hit donation. 
you can go ahead on and you can donate any amount, $5, $2. We take anything, any donation and kind donations also. You know, we help out with blankets, um, cancer papers, um, patients, I'm sorry, need clothing or anything. We help out with that. Mm -hmm. um, you can donate, call us, 765-807-9157. We could take donation also over the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what occupations other than your own would you like to try? Mm, I want to be a nurse. Oh, you do? Ah, oh, you're not a nurse, are you? No. Oh, okay, okay. I want, I want to be a nurse. Right now, I have um, a degree in business management, oh. but I always said I want to be a nurse. Since I started this, yeah. I said I want to be a nurse, but I know I can't, it's not, I can't do it because you can do anything, yeah. but- too busy because I'm too busy focusing on cancer patients you yeah. know so it's yeah. like I'm too busy trying to get out there and get everyone who don't have insurance calling me networking to different people like they're going to different events get me out there mm -hmm. so I'm a small organization I've been established since 2015 oh wow yeah, yeah. so I got a cancer ball coming up October 21st it's a masquerade ball mm -hmm. it's going to be here in Indianapolis Indiana it's on my website also I have Ron Garfrey he's the man that played on Fatal Attraction a multi-millionaire artist He's going to be there, be a keynote speaker at my ball. Wow, that's awesome. And if someone's watching their international, can how do they connect with you over Zoom? Do you have calls you do or groups? Um, we have, like I said, you can email me and we could do a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. That and right now I'm in the process of doing what's up or yep, you know what I'm talking about? What's yeah. up? Someone told me yeah, about the phone. Yeah. 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 They told me they just told me that yesterday. One of my board members. They said you need to get what's up also shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's free. Yeah. That's what she told yeah. me. So get what's up. I said, okay, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna do that today. Yeah, yeah. It's free. You just download it either on computers or on phones. It's very easy okay. for people to okay. connect. Yeah, yeah. Lots of businesses are getting it actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna mm -hmm. look into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any final thoughts or anything we didn't cover that you would like to talk about? Um, no, I think we cover everything. It just, um, mm -hmm. my final thoughts is just keep going, mm -hmm. never give up, no matter what. If you have cancer, suicidal, any mental illness, don't give up. Do not let it defeat you. You defeat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep going because like I tell people all the time, you were fighting for. If no one fight for you, you have to fight for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I agree. One last question. What is the meaning of life for you? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, The meaning of life. To me, it is outgoing. I love outgoing. Mm -hmm. um, don't take life for granted because we only get one. We get one chance at life. Mm -hmm. So you got to hit it head on and hard. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I said, we got one life. After we gone, that's it. You only get one chance. Mm -hmm. So that's what I tell people. We get one chance of life. So yeah. you got to come full force. You got to hit it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. Well, Chantel, thank you so much for your time, for all you, you for helping those who need it the most. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Looking forward to getting with you again. Yeah, you know, me give me some sponsorships and some donations. Yes, yes. <laughs> I might be in Canada one day. You never know. I'm yes. speaking to existence, so we might link up. <laughs> I might be in Canada. <laughs> yeah, let me know when you are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Thank you.